What if the New Orleans Pelicans shocked the world and took Ja Morant over Zion Williamson in the 2019 draft? A year earlier, while the Mavericks and Suns are happy with Luka Doncic and DeAndre Ayton, you can bet fans in Sacramento wish their team selected Jaron Jackson Jr. with the second overall pick back in 2018. Then, in 2020, next to Tyrese Maxey, LaMelo Ball, and Anthony Edwards, Desmond Bain has been one of the most valuable players from his respective draft class. However, 29 other teams passed on Bain before GM Zach Kleiman selected the four-year Texas Christian University alumni 30th overall. They should have never let the Western Conference's number two seed in the Grizzlies become this loaded, so you're about to see how dangerous the Memphis Grizzlies can be in the upcoming 2022 playoffs. Right quick, only 11.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DFlowHoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Memphis broke a franchise record with 42 fast break points in their last game over the New Orleans Pelicans. John Morant put up a typical 24 point, eight rebound and eight assist showing, but every time he matches up against the Big Easy, I can't help but think about how he's so far been the far better, more consistently available player than Zion Williamson, who the Pels front office followed the hype into selecting back in 2019. But any other team would have done the same thing, and it hasn't been the worst choice. Zion's a one-time all-star just like Jaw, and Williamson proved how good he can be with 27 point per game averages over 61 outings in his sophomore year. Having said that, sitting out the entirety of 2021-22 season, that makes it a staggering 135 games missed in three seasons so far for the burly Zion ever since he became the number one pick. Conversely, the number two overall pick from that 2019 draft class in Ja Morant hasn't suffered any major injury that's kept him on the shelf for an extended period of time, knock on wood, as Ja has missed just 39 games. He made the playoffs in 2021, something Zion hasn't even come close to sniffing in New Orleans, and Morant's currently fueling his organization to the number two seed in the top heavy Western Conference, surpassing the Golden State Warriors recently. Embracing a smaller market, Morant's taken his franchise to new heights, while the man taken directly ahead of him didn't even have the wherewithal to interact with CJ McCollum when he was first traded to his team. When Zion's on the floor, He's still not close to Morant in terms of his on-court ability, but in terms of being able to sell tickets and direct a locker room with both vocal leadership and leadership by example, Ja has an even bigger advantage over Zion in those aspects. Morant's not simply one of the best point guards, he's one of the top players in the NBA period. Ja's a dark horse MVP candidate, and merely the fact that he's in the conversation for that award displays the work ethic and tenaciousness that this kid possesses. You could have every bit of basketball knowledge possible, but not even then could you have predicted the type of dominance Morant's displaying this year. I think Memphis fans were hoping for a linear improvement in his game, improved shooting, growth as a defender, continued flashes of his elite passing and basketball IQ. But 16.4 points in the paint per game, leading the entire NBA at six foot three, that's unheard of. The next player at his height on that list is De'Aaron Fox at 17th overall in paint scoring, and Little Ja ranks directly ahead of giants like Nikola Jokic and Giannis Adetokounmpo. No guard in the past 25 years has led the NBA in paint points. You can attribute Ja's paint dominance to a combination of determination, athleticism, and smarts. He attacks no matter who's under the rim, and a part of that is because of his athleticism or quote, rockets in his calves, as Lakers star LeBron James said recently. Morant's also fourth in two-point field goals made despite missing 17 games for the Grizzlies so far in the 2021-22 campaign, ranking 10th in points and free throws, sixth in box plus minus, all while being fifth in the NBA in usage rate and ninth in assist percentage. So as you can see by almost every metric, John Morant's one of the top 10 to 15 players in the game at the very least, yet he still has one year remaining on his rookie contract. I made a separate video on Ja, which you should go check out after this. Moving on to Desmond Bain, who was passed on 29 times in 2020's draft because he was older than most players in his class, having just spent four years at TCU with the Horn Frogs. 
Despite making at least 42% of his three-point attempts in three different college seasons, competing in the Big 12 Conference, averaging 17 points and four dimes on shooting splits of 45, 42, 79 in his senior year, at 6'6", 215 pounds, Desmond should have been a more reputable NBA prospect. But NBADraft.net stated that Bain's wingspan being two inches shorter than his height limited his defensive potential in the pros. My Raptors probably selected Malachi Flynn one pick before Desmond because of that false assumption. Bain's sophomore season in 2022 has seen him become one of the NBA's most valuable defenders at his position. Behind Phoenix's Devin Booker, Golden State's Jordan Poole, New York's Alec Burks, Miami's Tyler Hero, and Utah's Donovan Mitchell, Desmond ranks number six among all NBA shooting guards in defensive rating. Not only is Bain's lateral quickness and overall peskiness evident defensively, but as Desmond proved at the NCAA level, his bucket getting is the focal point to his playing style. While he only ranks 14th right behind Portland's Anthony Simons in true shooting percentage, among the top four shooting guards in three-point efficiency, Desmond's seven attempts from deep range per game are by far the most. In terms of the weaponry in Bain's offensive bag, he's far from just a pure shooter. Man's capable of putting it on the deck with his tight handle, and the former Horned Frog has some underrated hops with the ability to seamlessly pop up for dunks after attacking the basket off the dribble. Without another crucial player on the wing in my fellow Torontonian and the product of Oregon in Delon Brooks having missed 40 plus games due to injury, a man from Richmond, Indiana and Texas Christian University has stepped up as the Grizzlies second leading scorer behind Ja Morant. Bain nearly being a second round pick, instantly cracking Memphis's rotation, making the all rookie second team and now being a contender for 2022's most improved player of the year is an outstanding NBA fairy tale that you unfortunately rarely hear about. Speaking of great stories, the Grizzlies rim protecting backbone and one of the world's most talented stretch big men in Jaron Jackson Jr. is leading the NBA in total blocks. Further displaying his impact on this end of the floor, Jaron's also just behind the Twin Towers in Cleveland, ranking as the seventh most valuable defensive center in the association. Additionally, and equally as important as what he does on the other side, Triple J keeps the Grizzlies offense efficient with his ability to stretch the floor with a three-point shot while operating at the center position. Jaron's number one among all centers in shots attempted from deep range, and while he's draining just over 31% of those triples, whether he's hitting shots or not, the threat Jackson Jr. provides with his three-point volume still draws attention from opposing defenses, which in turn keeps the floor spaced out, opening up opportunities in the lane and at the rim for the likes of Ja Morant, Desmond Bain, Steven Adams, even the team's fourth and fifth scores in DeAnthony Melton and Brandon Clark, who are, by the way, a couple versatile two-way wings who will definitely come in handy for the Grizz during the postseason. Melton and Clark have the ability to operate and more significantly defend positions one through four. Memphis's depth, even without DeLon Brooks, allows coach Taylor Jenkins to throw multiple looks at opposing team's top players, which is the best way to slow down a superstar scoring weapon. Again, that bodes well for Memphis this spring. 2021's 10th overall pick, the product of Stanford University and Sierra Canyon High School, Zyar Williams, has accepted his role as a primary lob catcher and floor spacer in Coach Taylor's system. At 6'9", Williams has an intimidating wingspan that stretches out to around 7 feet long. Mix that reach with his mobility, and that also makes the rookie a more than adequate defender. Rook's last 15 games have seen him average 9 points, making an above average 53% from the field and 39% from deep range. Over the next few years, it's going to be interesting to see the development of Zaire Williams. I'll definitely keep my eye out for him. So, how good of a player can Zaire Williams develop into? Best answer down below in the comments section gets next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is John Landgrieb, who says George Niang is the Sixers' best player outside of Tyrese Maxey, Joel Embiid, and James Harden, saying when he can come off the bench and give you 15 and knock down some threes, it can change the whole game. He got us back in that Bulls game early on when we started off slow and we didn't look back.
Appreciate every answer from the best hoop stock community on YouTube. I hope you have a great night. DFlow signing off.